Hello Aviators! So we wish to have a DCS with a head tracking for little to no money. That's what I wanted as well. And that's how I discovered this beautiful software called OpenTrack. When you install it, now don't get scared, yeah, it's an ugly guy here. When you install it, it uh, is picked by DCS automatically. So there's nothing you have to do on DCS to actually use this. It will appear as a track IR uh, device and it will work. We'll talk about some minor considerations later. Now let's talk about the software. After you install the software, it will use, I guess this is the default input, neural tracker, which is good if you want to use one of your cameras. In this case I'm using a camera from a mobile phone, from Android mobile phone, uh, which uh, requires an application on the Android phone and then an application on the PC as well. After that, you know, it looks like this is the client on the PC and uh, Droidcam is the name of the software on, uh, on the Play Store as well. It's easy to install and the free version offers a medium or low quality video. I'm using the paid version already because I'm using it as a PC camera actually. And uh, uh, I'm not sure how it would work with uh, low quality feed, but it doesn't work very well with uh, high uh, quality video either. Let's see how that works. We can start the trick in. I already set some things uh, on the in the options. We will go through that. I have, for instance, a shortcut for centering the image and also a shortcut to turn the tracking on and off, which is always a good thing. How to do that? Shortcuts, binds, you know, it can set two alternatives. I have one only for keyboard and then one using the joystick, but with some modifier. Unluckily, uh, if you use modifiers on the joystick, uh, you can like uh, have a combo of uh, joystick uh, buttons. It only uh, detects one button. So I had to use modifier from the keyboard. So this is good when you want to pause the track in with toggle and center it because um, funny thing uh, I need it quite often just to recenter it because sometimes I just move a little bit or uh, maybe I um, go to the rudder pedals and then go off them and suddenly my like preferred position changes a little bit on the chair and I want to recenter it so it's uh, really a very useful shortcut. Now another thing you need to do is to modify the mapping in such a way that the tracking is kind of oversensitive because you definitely don't want to lose sight uh, from the screen you know you want to it's the same with the hardware track IR you know you want a little movement to have a big impact you do it in uh, here you simply choose what's the max input uh, and that is then mapped to uh, the output. Here we, for instance, can choose whether the output is uh, 90 degrees. I set it to 180, which uh, is much better when I'm looking up and down. Especially, uh, at least for DCS, it's good to be able to look all the way up. And uh, what else? Uh, roll again, you know, we want to uh, limit. Uh, this is probably the least concern. Um, strangely, with this video feed, I, I'm not sure whether it's a problem with this neural tracker, the role is actually inversed. If you want to fix that, uh, we will get to it in a minute. And the same goes for uh, like movement axis. You just choose the range of motion, which is actually uh, 30 centimeters probably uh, forward and 30 centimeters backwards if I understand it correctly. You just play with these. Uh, you can also play with the shape of the curve if you want to. I, I didn't, maybe I will later, but uh, the yaw and pitch uh, sensitivity, you don't want it one-to-one. -one. Uh, that helps a lot. So these are probably the most important things, yaw and pitch. 
Now with the mapping set we can quickly go over other options here. We talked about uh, the shortcuts. Uh, what I definitely need to set properly is this center at startup. I don't remember exactly what was the default, but disabled for instance doesn't work for me at all. The octopus goes wherever it wants to go and it doesn't listen, not even after recenter, you know, it doesn't work. So if you have any problem, you can for instance experiment with this. You know, this one works, but uh, acts a little bit differently. And this again, uh, point and uh, the draw composite it works better, but you know you, have, you can have a different setup and it can work differently. But it's definitely a thing that should be checked. The next thing is the output tab, where you can invert uh, any axis. Here I could I can fix the roll axis uh, with this checkbox uh, for the camera. Uh, or a camera tracking, but I believe this is um, probably a bug in this neural net tracker because uh, it works fine without inverted uh, access in the next solution I will show you. In relative translation, this uh, drop down is interesting because uh, it changes how uh, rotation and movement uh, works together. For instance, uh, you can guess in one in one uh, situation you need to go forward and look around and uh, the same can uh, be uh, when, when you switch it the same effect would be done when you look around first and then you go forward you know to the side actually so it's just an order of uh, rotation and movement whatever works for you you know uh, with disabled I need to do um, less movement to the side so it's probably better for DCS uh, when you just want to move the head a little bit. Game detection, nothing is needed here. And finally filter, uh, here you can uh, smooth the movement. It would probably get a little bit laggier, um, but uh, I experimented with this for the camera. I hoped it will fix the camera, but it doesn't. So let's see how it works in DCS. I will recenter the camera again and you can see that with little to no movement of my head there's a ton of movement in the, in the z-axis and it's not like um, it's over sensitive that the input uh, is uh, set to too small distance it's simply the track in I don't know it's simply very jittery you know uh, I can look around that's okay well, this works fine as expected but overall the camera is very shaky perhaps you can uh, it can work better if you have uh, better lighting uh, or better camera feed I'm not sure you can try it especially if you have a dedicated PC camera it may work better so obviously I'm not happy with the video solution here I'm not sure what is the problem of the tracker here. Uh, there's some you know, neural network. Uh, I'm not sure what's the quality of the neural network. We can compare the quality of this solution with the next solution that also uses the front-facing camera on the mobile phone. And the solution is called Track AR for Open Track. This is an Android application. It costs $3, so it's not for free, but it's pretty cheap and I can definitely recommend it. Uh, because uh, when I saw that the open track works on with the camera but uh, just uh, input data is uh, jittery uh, the only question is whether uh, track AR can make it better and on my phone it did it definitely made it better so how does it look it looks like this very simple it doesn't you know show any axis on your head uh, which makes you like questioning uh, whether it works or not and you need to connect it to the open track because you know it is in the name right for open track so it doesn't need anything else on the PC just this software now to set it up 
you need to set the same things on uh, both sides. Firstly, uh, previously we had it on neural net uh, tracker. You have to switch it to UDP of a network. So the Android application will actually communicate with your computer via, for instance, Wi-Fi and local network uh, over this UDP protocol. Uh, on the application, you need to change the IP address uh, to set it to your computer address. Uh, how to get the computer address, you can Google it, I guess. And uh, port is already preset because here it's 4242 by default, here it's 4242 by default as well. And unless there is a collision on the port, uh, you don't have to set it. If uh, it doesn't work, choose a different port, but on, on both sides, it has to be the same, of course. After that, you just, you know, start tracking and you can see that the octopus is moving and uh, perhaps you just need to recenter it again all the options you know and of course the mapping has to be set as uh, we previously discussed but i already set it for this solution so you know it works just like before it's sensitive enough and i think it's time to try it in the game So, here's my trusty albatross and uh, let's just recenter it again and you can see that the jitter is definitely gone now. I can look around. No problem there. The coordination on my side is uh, still not very good, but you know, I can do all the stuff that's expected from this and uh, the smoothness is definitely there you can actually see uh, this immediately also on these numbers that they don't you know jump so much as they jumped previously so that's why i can only recommend check ar for open track for just three dollars again it uses a camera on the phone but then it processes the camera information and sends tracking data to the open track so it doesn't let open track to process the camera information all right there are a few more things i want to cover here first is this mirror toggle you probably want to turn it on when you check in your head check in with the octopus uh, you can see yourself uh, better in that octopus right but otherwise, you know, it uh, doesn't change the, the setup actually. You know, it only affects this preview here. So this one thing. Another thing is uh, that the Trek AR also has this very useful dimming. So when you press this button on the, on the screen of your phone, it dims the screen. Now, on the screen I can actually see a little green dot here which tells me that it does something. You definitely don't want to, uh, you know, use the power button. Uh, what you want to do is to drag from the bottom and go back. And you're back here. Finally, the most important thing is to get used to this. So let's try how I can actually take off in this plane. Because it's not the same thing like before. Previously, I could use the dashboard as a reference uh, of my role, but now, you know, everything is much more fluid, so I have to get used to it. But uh, that's what everybody who uses the head tracking, everybody told, tells you the same thing, that uh, it requires some time to get, uh, to get used to. Okay, a little bit late. Little... All right, but you know the possibility to look around is really, really great. Finally, there is one more thing. We discussed that uh, recenter and toggle option. So I can recenter the view. I can also toggle the tracking off. So now. It's perfectly still, but 
What doesn't work is uh, my previously bound keys like uh, on, the, on the head here. And uh, to enable that, you actually have to go to the control options and disable the track IR uh, input altogether. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut how you can do it in DCS. This is, uh, I think, really something that can be improved. The DCS can offer you a single shortcut that uh, ignores track IR input. Now we can look around the old way. But other than that, it's not a problem. But it's good to know, especially if you uh, plan to use uh, this track IR only for some occasions and uh, not to use it in others if you have this kind of hybrid setup. And back to head tracking when I enable it. Yeah. And I guess this is the last piece of information for this video. It was a long video, sorry for that, but I hope you find it useful. See you next time.